Welcome, and in our review of rational expressions, we are going to learn how to simplify our rational expressions as well as add, subtract, multiply, and divide. All right, the first thing I want to uh, make sure that you pay attention to is the key property here. Uh, it basically talks about the idea that if you have a binomial, you know, like our b minus a, and if you were to flip it around, you can... Uh, have the op you know the flip of it but it's the opposite so an example here is instead of 4 minus x I can change into an x minus 4 uh, but now I have to have a negative 1 in front so I, I created the opposite uh, the other situation here is notice that uh, if I have a fraction in which they're opposites essentially it's um, you know something being divided by itself but one is the opposite of the other so it simplifies down to negative 1 so look for those examples as uh, we're going through Okay. All right, big idea for uh, today is making sure that you understand how to factor. So we did a review on factoring. All right, and the reason for that is like uh, you see up here in one of the key properties, our goal is going to be to try and uh, cancel and simplify. So uh, I see right away here in example number one that in the denominator I can take out a 5. And so what that means is if I change this to 4 minus 3x and then take out a 5, I'm left with a 3x minus 4. All right, what that means is this situation here is just like this property right here in which they're opposites. So I can basically cancel this out and this becomes a negative 1. All right, so now... I have to remember that since the 5 is in the denominator, this is a 1 fifth. So a 1 fifth times negative 1 means that this simplifies down to negative 1 fifth. Okay? Now, you can also go the route of, you know, turning it around, you know, and using the above property, uh, and then you would still end up with your negative 1. All right, in example 2, I see here the 36 minus x squared can be the difference of two squares. So I'm going to factor that into a 6 minus x and then a 6 plus x by taking the square roots of the two terms. And then that's over an x minus 6. I see here that uh, these two are very similar, just opposites. So like our key property above, I'm just going to cancel these out and create a negative 1. So now I end up with a you know, negative 1 times the prop, uh, parentheses 6 plus x. If you want to, you can distribute the negative 1. All right, so that uh, deals with the idea of, you know, having some binomials that are turned around. Not all of them are going to be like that, okay? So a couple more situations. This one is going to just be a little bit more complicated in terms of uh, we're possibly going to have to factor the numerator and the denominator. All right, in example number three, I see the difference of two cubes. So we reviewed this. Remember, soap, okay? So I do my cube root, x minus 2. 2 is the cube root of 8. Notice that the sign stays the same. Then I've got x squared. I'm going to use the opposite sign. I'm going to multiply the 2 and the x together. And then I always have a plus sign, and I'm going to put the 2 and the x, uh, or the 2 squared, which is 4. In the denominator, I should be looking for one of these two parentheses that I already created. Okay, It looks like I have a GCF of an x, and so I can factor that out, and I'm left with an x minus 2. All right, And then I can cancel out these x minus 2s, and therefore I'm left with an x squared plus 2x plus 4 all over x. The x cannot simplify with anything in the numerator. You have to remember, as you can see up here, it's all in parentheses. So the only way that you can cancel um, something that is grouped like this is if you have another parentheses exactly like it. Or if everything in here had an x, and not everything does because the 4 doesn't. Okay, So this is our final answer. All right, in an example 4, continuing to do the same thing, all right, what I'm going to do with the first one is I'm going to use the idea of I'm going to just simply unfoil the numerator. Uh, two numbers that multiply to be a positive 8 that add to be a negative 6 would be x minus 4 and x minus 2. Negative 2 times 4, negative 2 plus negative 4. OK, 
okay? And then I am going to factor out. It looks like both of these terms have an x minus 2, so my GCF is x minus 2, leaving an a minus, or sorry, plus b. All right, it looks like the x minus 2s are going to cancel, leaving me with an x minus 4 over an a plus b. So as you can see, um, you know, a lot of what we're doing uh, in this section deals with the idea of factoring. That's why we reviewed it. Uh, big thing is if you factor, if you can at least factor one of them, the numerator or the denominator, okay, um, look, use that as like a hint to help you with the other if you're struggling at all, okay? Uh, in this last example, you don't necessarily need the parentheses. Um, you can leave them. It's not wrong. All right, on to page two. All right, only difference here on examples five and six is we're dealing with the idea of multiplying and dividing. So one of the things that uh, you know a lot of people get confused on is they think of that uh, cross multiplying. Remember, that is if you, there's an equal sign in between the parentheses. This is multiplying, so we multiply straight across. All right, so big thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually uh, factor first, okay? So in... Uh, this one, again, like I kind of said, you know, start with something that uh, you think is easy to do. Well, I see from the denominator on the first one, there are no numbers that multiply to be 1 that also add to be 1. So therefore, this is going to stay exactly the same. That can't factor. Okay, um, I see this is the difference of two squares, so that's an easy one. So let's get that one done. So 2 minus x and 2 plus x. Now I should be thinking, since the x's are behind, that hey, maybe it's back to example 1 or 2 where we're probably going to get an x plus 2 or an x minus 2 and we're going to have to deal with the idea of uh, the negative 1. Alright, I see the uh, difference of two cubes. So I've got the cube root of x is x minus the cube root of 1, which is 1. I've got x squared. Uh, remember that the next sign is always the opposite. Okay, I put the 1 and the x together, and then I got plus 1 squared. Oh, well that's actually kind of neat, because I see that this is going to cancel with this. They're exactly the same. All right, so now I work my way over to the uh, numerator on the first one. I'm thinking that there's probably an x minus 2. It's just a guess. Okay, so I'm going to just do a little trial and error here. Okay, and if I have an x minus 2, well, if I have an x, I need a 2x over here so that they foil to be a 2x squared. If I have a negative 2 here, that means they need a positive 3 here so that negative 2 times 3 multiplies to be negative 6. If I check with my inner and outer, Notice that I would end up with a negative 4x and a positive 3x, which would combine to be a negative 1x. So I got pretty lucky there. It worked. Okay. Now what that means is that these can cancel, but a negative 1 remains behind. It doesn't look as though anything else can simplify, so I am left with a 2x plus 3 times an x minus 1, all divided by a negative 1 times a 2 plus x. And there we go. You don't have to worry about uh, foiling the numerator. You can leave it as is. All right, in example 6, big thing you have to remember is that when you're dividing with fractions that you're going to multiply by the reciprocal of the second one. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and factor uh, these and do the multiplying. So I see the difference of two squares from the numerator and I see the difference of two squares from the denominator. So it looks as though the uh, numerator is going to factor to x plus 12 and x minus 12. The denominator is going to factor to x minus 2 and x plus 2. This is going to be multiplied by the flip, so x plus 2 and x plus 12. And it looks as though our x plus 2s are going to cancel and our x plus 12s are going to cancel. Therefore, we're left with an x minus 12 over an x minus 2. 
Again, reminder that these are kind of locked up. They're married, so you can't cancel out the x's, and you can't do 12 divided by 2. This is our final answer. All right, last section. We're going to deal with the idea of adding and subtracting uh, with our rational expressions. Big idea here is we need our LCD, our least common denominator. So in the first example, a uh, big thing that I have to think about is, all right, what is the smallest number that 4 and 10 go into? Well, the first number I can think of is 20. And then after that, remember that you are going to take your uh, variables and add that in as well. So it looks like all of them need at least an x, and it looks like they all need at least a y squared. So this is my LCD. Okay. Now that means that in order to get to this, I need to multiply in the uh, first parentheses, or sorry, the first fraction. To get to 20, I need to multiply by 5 and a y squared. And whatever I multiply the denominator by, I have to multiply the numerator by. The second fraction, I'm going to have to multiply by a 2x in order to get my LCD. And the third one, since it's over 1, it looks like I'm going to have to multiply by everything. So 20xy squared over 20xy squared. Okay. Now I tend to, um, you know, just uh, combine this all into one fraction because now I know that the denominator is 20xy squared. And remember that when you're adding all your fractions together, the denominator stays the same. You're just simply adding the numerator. So in my first one, I, it looks like I have a 15y squared. In the second one, it looks as though I have a 14x squared. And in the last one, it looks like I have minus a 40xy squared. Okay. All right, so from here, in terms of uh, simplifying, um, if you can combine anything in the numerator together, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, in terms of like canceling x's and y's, it would have to be something that is in all four terms, and I don't see that anything that is in all four. So this is our final answer. And if you there is something that is in all four, that probably means you didn't use the LCD, you just used a regular common denominator. All right, example eight. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I want to take anything that's factorable and I want to factor it. The reason I want to do this is because that helps me determine what my LCD is. So it looks as though my LCD is going to be uh, an x minus 3 times an x plus 3. Um, the first fraction has both, the second one doesn't, so I have to multiply the second fraction by an x minus 3 and an x minus 3. Big thing that uh, I am going to uh, caution you on is a minus sign here, okay? Reminder that when you do that, that means we're going to have to distribute this minus sign across the parentheses. So keep that in mind as we move along, okay? So I've got my common denominator of x minus 3 and x plus 3. I've got x from the first fraction minus 1 times and x minus 3. Okay, reminder we're going to distribute this minus sign. It looks as though the uh, x's here are going to end up canceling out, but that's also going to give us a 3 over an x minus 3 and an x plus 3. Uh, I could write the denominator as x squared uh, minus 9 if I wanted to. That's fine, it's not wrong. Um, again, threes cannot cancel. All right, last example. Okay, for this one, it goes back to the way we started. Automatically, I see, uh, hey, the x is backwards, so that gives me a hint that I'm probably going to have a negative one somewhere. Uh, I'm going to factor this out to x plus 3 and x minus 2. Oh, so here you go. These are opposites of each other. So I'm going to change this into negative 1 times an x minus 2 so that it matches, okay? 
All right, so what I can do is, uh, instead of having to multiply by negative 1 over here, which I guess I could do, you can always do that, um, I can also transfer the negative 1 uh, to the numerator uh, if I wanted to as well, which means that if I do that, that this becomes negative and this becomes negative. But really, that's, uh, it's going to come down to a, a preference uh, that you have. All right, it looks as though I am going to multiply the top by x plus 3 on the second one because of, you know, I need that LCD of x plus 3 and x minus 2. So that means I am left with a 15 and then plus a negative x minus 1 times an x plus 3 all over an x minus 2 and an x plus 3. All right, so this we are going to have to FOIL this out. Okay, that's going to give us a negative x squared. It's going to give us a negative x and a negative 3x or a negative 4x, and then a negative 3 from the last terms. And so now all I'm going to do is combine everything together. And so it looks like I have a negative x squared, a negative 4x, and a positive 12 in the numerator, all divided by x minus 2 and an x plus 3. Okay, the only thing that I should probably just check to see if this is factorable. And uh, um, if it is, then you could potentially um, maybe cancel an x minus 2 or an x plus 3 if it is. All right, so that concludes our uh, notes for rational expressions. If you have questions, please bring them with you to class.